Okay, good afternoon uh, once again. This is uh, Dave Nadler with the National Weather Service in Peachtree City, Atlanta. This is a special weather briefing on Tropical Storm Debbie, uh, what is now Tropical Storm Debbie for North and Central Georgia. Um, go ahead and get started here. <clears throat> Okay, here are the main points. Uh, we'll obviously um, dive into uh, kind of a, each of these sections and uh, talk more about kind of Debbie and what it's expected to do over the next couple of days. But um, the main thing is that uh, heavy rain and wind is gonna start to increase over parts of central Georgia as early as tonight, um, continuing uh, through the day Monday and then even to Tuesday. Now, as we get through uh, Monday or we get into Monday, Monday night into Tuesday, as the uh, system approaches, it gets a little bit closer um, we could start seeing some significant impacts uh, with respect to heavy rain, flooding. Um, the winds as well, it's just obviously going to be, be dependent on how strong um, the system is when it makes landfall. Um, we'll talk about that here in just a second. But I do want to hit that second bullet that um, we could see, be looking at some fairly significant impacts across parts of central Georgia, especially our south and east counties, um, as we go into late Monday, Monday night into Tuesday. Um, as the system approaches. So um, be mindful of that. Um, a tropical storm watch is now in effect for Crisp, Wilcox, Dodge, Telfair, Wheeler, Montgomery, and Toombs County, excuse me, in our area. Um, tropical storm watches um, obviously extended to parts of uh, Tallahassee, Jacksonville, and Charleston's counties as well. But the, just for our counties, these are the ones that are currently um, under a tropical storm watch at this time. And also flood watches for a much broader area of East Central and Southeast portions of Central Georgia. I'll get into that here in just a second. Okay, so here's the latest on Debbie. Uh, from the 11 a.m. advisory from the National Hurricane Center, Debbie's about, um, I would say about 130 miles west-southwest of Tampa. Um, it's, 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 it has intensified a little bit more rapidly than what they were looking at this time yesterday. Um, so it's a high-end like tropical storm right now, uh, max wind 65 miles per hour expected to kind of move to the north northeast over the next 12 to 24 hours and become a hurricane uh, before making landfall somewhere over that um, big bend area of Florida of the Florida panhandle over the next um, you know 18 to 24 hours so um, the hurricane center we were we were listening in on their call this morning around 10 o'clock um, they are expecting sort of rapid intensification um, just before landfall um, we've seen a lot of that over the years um, happen the Gulf waters are extremely warm right now um, the upper level conditions are very supportive of, of tropical storm, you know, obviously hurricane intensification. Um, so yeah, this is, um, it's, it's fast, it's approaching the coast pretty quickly, but intensification is expected to occur over the next 12 to 24 hours. And just remember when you're looking at this forecast cone, um, the impacts can be felt well outside of the cone. This is just looking at the, where the center of the system is gonna be. It's not talking about any of the, of the tropical uh, related uh, weather threats or impacts. <clears throat> so please keep that in mind. Okay, so uh, the latest watches uh, for our area, I talked about the flood watch that extends, uh, expands across a good portion of east central and southeast um, of our uh, forecast area. And the latest tropical storm watch that you now see in the far like southern and southeastern counties. Um, I did circle that area to the north um, and west of the where the existing, the current tropical storm watches exist because I just want to make sure, just because you're not in any sort of like watch, um, please don't let your guard down on this on this system because there's still a lot of uncertainty as to you know where it could you know track and just a shift like to the to the west, like 50 to 100 miles could really make some differences uh, across uh, areas to the north and west of the current uh, counties that are under a tropical storm watch. So please, if you're on this call, at Macon, even Columbus, um, to like Eatonton, Warrington, Milledgeville area, please don't. Just assume like everything's going to be just fine um, because you're not in any sort of watch right now. Okay, let me show you a little bit about the ensembles, which is sort of like forecast uncertainty. A bunch of models kind of coming together, looking at where the system is going to track over the next um, 72 to 96 hours. Um, moving ahead, you're, you're now looking at around midnight tonight. Basically, you're seeing that cluster of where the center of the system is expected to be and the probability is pretty high like over 80 percent that's good pretty good confidence that the system is going to track somewhere to where the national hurricane center has that track uh basically over the next 18 to 24 hours um so as we had this is like midday tomorrow this is midnight tomorrow night and early tuesday um and then even getting into early or, or midday tuesday um for the most part there's a pretty good cluster 
uh, of uh, outputs or solutions that are over um, parts of Southeast Georgia um, and then moving into the Southern part of South Carolina. So um, at this point, the system should you know, be weakening as it moves inland, uh, but there's still gonna be a tremendous amount of rainfall and some pretty gusty winds associated with the system at this point. And as we go even farther in the time, like midnight Tuesday night into early Wednesday and any things really start to become um, rather uncertain with respect to, is the system gonna slow down? It is expected to slow down and potentially stall somewhere uh, along the Georgia, South Carolina coast, whether or not that's offshore in the open waters or inland, uh, that definitely remains to be seen. So um, this is Wednesday. So this is something that we could be dealing with, especially for parts of our Southeast counties um, for the whole week. Um, and, and there's definitely there's some solutions that actually turn it back west into South Carolina or Georgia as we head toward the end of the week. So there's really a lot of, there, there's definitely a lot of uncertainty as we go beyond like Tuesday into early Wednesday with what Debbie is going to do. So please, please keep up to date with what we're saying. We're gonna continue to keep you, you know, up to date with the latest information from the National Hurricane Center, of course, the threats and the impacts that are expected across our area as we head uh, over the next three to five days. <clears throat> uh, here's the latest satellite loop of Debbie. It's looking, uh, continuing to get pretty organized. We don't have like a, a, a central eye, so to say, just yet, but definitely the center of circulation is pretty uh, evident on satellite there to the west of uh, Tampa. Um, uh, most of the uh, significant rain and storms and tornado threat is on the east side of the system right now, and that's probably going to continue as the uh, system moves to the north northeast over the next um, 18 to 24 hours. So just breaking down real quickly again, our imp our threats and impacts and how we see what the um, how potentially strong the impacts could be. The biggest concern is going to be the rainfall and flooding, um, followed by the you know river flooding kind of tied into that followed by the winds. And the good news is that at this point, um, just about all of our area is not expected to be any in any sort of severe or tornado risk. But again, if things shift a little bit more to the west, um, then things could get a little more interesting with respect to uh, the potential of seeing any tornadoes. But we'll, um, at this point, we're not looking at a tornado threat over our area. That should stay to the south and east of us. <clears throat> Okay, here's the latest rainfall forecast. And again, this is really subject to change based off of the track. Um, not only the track, but what is Debbie going to do um, as we go beyond like Tuesday, Wednesday? This is only a total rainfall graphic basically through Tuesday night, early Wednesday morning. And you can see that we could see um, a good portion of our far southeast counties could see anywhere from six to as much as 12 plus inches of rain over the next, um, you know, two to three days. So. This is our definitely, I kind of bolded that. Um, this is definitely our biggest concern to life and property at this point. Um, we start getting six, eight, 10, 12, 14 inches of rain. Uh, even over a, a two, to eight, two to three day period, we're gonna really start seeing some flash flood and um, you know river flood issues for sure um, over these areas. So um, again, it's a pretty tight gradient between you know the lighter rainfall amounts and the real significant heavy rainfall amounts. So a slight shift um, in the track of Debbie. And then of course, if it slows down and starts to meander uh, nearby, just to the east of our area, that could really pull back some, some significant rainfall into our area, even beyond Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, so please, this is uh, definitely something you wanna uh, focus on, take seriously, and um, just be prepared uh, for um, significant flash flooding over portions of our, of our East Central and Southeast counties as we head um, through the early part to the middle part of the week. And again, the flood watch I, I mentioned earlier covers these areas. This could be adjusted a little bit, but for the most part, we feel pretty good about where we have the flood watch in effect at this point. Um, the two other graphics you see are the excessive rainfall outlook. So basically anywhere in red, this is Monday into early Tuesday, you basically have um, at least a four in 10 chance or 40% chance of seeing flash flooding uh, based on the, on the uh, rainfall that is expected to accumulate um, in those areas over the next uh, couple of days. So, and then the next graphic is just a day three outlook. That's basically Tuesday and early Wednesday. Um, as the system is expected to shift a little bit more to the east of the area, the flash flood concerns uh, come down just a little bit. Um, but again, this could this could change if um, you know the the track of the system deviates a little bit from what the uh, current forecast is showing. So, um, 
but basically the main main thing is here is that we could be looking at a a rather prolonged duration of heavy rain um, across portions of our southeast counties um, which could lead to significant flash flooding river flooding uh, over the course of the whole week and this is a river flood outlook this is actually taking I, I included the link at the bottom it's taking a projection of ensemble models and projecting uh, kind of what some of these river forecast points are, are going to do over the next few days um, there's a good area over east central and southeast part of the state that could um, see a pretty good chance of seeing at least minor to localized moderate flooding um, with some of these rivers and streams so um, definitely subject to change based on the rainfall but I do want to give kind of put this out there that you know the prediction is already there that we're going to see some sort of river flooding over the next few days in these areas that you're seeing there so you can um, you could go to that uh, link down there and it'll give you sort of an update to uh, each of the models as more information more data kind of comes in so let's let's transition to winds um, a lesser threat but still a threat compared to the the heavy rain and flooding potential um, right now we're looking at um, the, you know the strongest winds to be down across you know far central Georgia as closer to obviously the center of Debbie and the timing of where we can see the strongest wind gusts are going to be is going to look to be tomorrow um, through Tuesday afternoon so the concern is the not so much the magnitude of these winds but the duration of seeing these 20 30 potentially 40 plus mile per hour wind gusts at times especially with some of the outer rain bands or the rain as the heavier rain comes in um, we could definitely see like 30, 40 plus mile per hour winds. And that's why we have the tropical storm watch in effect for some of those counties um, from Cordial uh, all the way east towards uh, Lyons uh, area there in Toombs County. So um, just keep that in mind. Um, even farther north um, from like Macon to Atlanta, 20 to 30 mile an hour gust doesn't seem like a lot. But if we get 20 to 30 mile an hour wind gusts um, for 18 to 24 hours, then, you know, with some rain that could be a little bit more problematic with bringing, you know, potentially some trees down along with power outages. So, um, again, we'll. Uh, this is kind of our best guess at where what we're seeing right now. And the National Hurricane Center also has their probable probabilities of seeing tropical storm force winds, and that kind of noses into certainly South Georgia, but into parts of Central Georgia, um, Albany to like um, Macon, anywhere from a two to a four in ten chance of seeing tropical storm force winds basically over the next few days. Um, so obviously the, there's a higher probability the farther south you go um, and east as the system kind of uh, moves inland and approaches the coast over the next um, 24 hours or so. So this graphic will change um, from the National Hurricane Center with time as the system you know, gets closer to the coast and eventually moves inland uh, tomorrow into tomorrow night. Again, I was talking about the tornado threat. Uh, thankfully at this time, the, the best chance of seeing um, tornadoes is going to be across far south Georgia, uh, outside of our forecast area, basically at this point. Um, but again, if the if the center of Debbie decides to go more north or west, um, this could shift back to the west a little bit across our far southeast counties. So um, just keep an eye on this. Right now, we're not really magnifying this too much, but definitely something to watch over the next uh, 24 hours or so. All right, so in summary, um, again, the key takeaways, Debbie's gonna intensify over the next 24 hours before making landfall. It's expected to bring heavy rain um, and wind to parts of central Georgia as early as tonight. Um, we're already starting to see those, some of those far outer rain bands get close across South Georgia. So, um, you know, things are gonna definitely pick up tonight into tomorrow. Um, and some of the impacts could be rather significant as we go through tomorrow into Tuesday. Um, especially with respect to the heavy rain uh, flash flood flood potential. Tropical storm watches now in effect for those counties, Chris, Wilcox, Dodge, all the way to Toombs County. Um, and then a flood watch is in effect for a greater area of East Central and Southeast portions of Central Georgia, um, basically through um, Wednesday morning at this point. So with that, um, we are going to do another webinar tomorrow um, at 1230. Um, 